we continue with First Timothy chapter 3 from 8 to 10, uh, talking about deacons. Just a reminder that Timothy was serving the church in Ephesus, that Paul had left in there as Paul had uh, gone over to Corinth. And it's possible that Paul was writing from Corinth, but we're not entirely sure where he was writing from. And even today, the ruins stand still there in Ephesus of possibly the temple to Artemis or Dionysus in Ephesus that caused so much of the trouble in uh, the book of Acts during Paul's ministry there. Timothy is in charge of the church there and there's been some issues about uh, um, false teaching and different leaders pulling in different directions. And so now Paul is talking to Timothy about the task of appointing leaders and, and making sure the right leaders are appointed. Remember that this letter is a pastoral epistle, so it's written to Timothy, but it would have been expected that it was read out loud to the church. Deacons likewise must be serious, says the New Revised Standard Version. But an interesting translation choice in the NIV version is that it says deacons likewise are to be men. In the Greek original, it's diakonos, which is servants, which is a male pronoun. Uh, so, but in Greek, that doesn't really um, count so much. Or santos, likewise, semnos, uh, in the King James, and this translation is grave, uh, or to be serious. Deacons were established in Acts chapter 6, verse 2, and we read that the apostles, the apostles, the twelve, called together the whole community of the disciples and said, it is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to wait on table. And so, to do the practical work of the church, deacons were appointed. So, they must be serious. And I, often when I see that, that they must be serious, I think, oh no, am I the right kind of person for the job of a minister? Because I'm very much a person who's not always very serious. And uh, the King James Version is even more, um, more dire because it says they must be grave. Grave is, is not such a great uh, word. Some translations say dignified, rather. Honorable might be a more uh, suitable translation. Somebody who is respectable. Then they mustn't be double-tongued. They mustn't uh, say one thing and mean another or say one thing to some people or uh, run around like politicians telling people they, what they want to hear. And some translations say sincere. Uh, again, just like with the bishops, the idea was that they'd be beyond reproach. These are not to be perfect people. They're not to be amazing, spectacular, celebrity type people. They are meant to be honest, down-to-earth people that you can that you can deal with. In the New Revised Standard Version, they mustn't indulge in much wine. The Greek word there, prosepotas, is language that could be used for, for devotion to a god. So they mustn't be devoted to much wine in, in the way that, um, that you are devoted to a god. And it can very easy with addictions to alcohol or whatever people are addicted to, can become like that. They mustn't be greedy for money. And sometimes church is seen as this networking opportunity. Then they must hold fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. And I really like that turn of phrase. But Paul speaks about the mystery that, that he proclaims. And Paul writes about saying, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words of wisdom. And then I assume that verse 2 is a summary of the mystery of God. I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. In Timothy's church in Ephesus, it seemed that there was a lot of add-ons to the gospel, and people coming up with different things that you needed to believe or do or experience in order to be a real Christian. And we might even see that in the church today. But all that they must hold on to is that simple mystery of the faith with a clear conscience, dunadesis in Greek doesn't just mean a clear conscience. It's most often used to talk about the conscience, but it also means knowing something to be true because you've experienced it. Lord God, we pray for servants and leaders in the church. We ask that you'd help each and every one of them and us to be serious, to be sincere in our, our work, to not be double-tongued trying to please people with our words, but to be honest and sincere in our words. Lord, where we have addictions, we ask that you would help us not to bow down to those addictions, but to be set free from them. Where we are greedy for gain for ourselves, help us to, to discern what is right and to put our own needs second and put you first. 
And finally, Lord, let us hold on to the mystery of the faith, the precious gospel, the simple gospel, that you, Jesus, died for us on the cross, that you rose again, and that you defeated evil and you've given us new life. Now help us to hold on to this with a clear conscience and enjoy the privilege of serving you for your glory. In Jesus' name, Amen.